I'm very grateful for this invitation to present this video abstract of our review article titled Convalescent Plasma Therapy, an Effective Therapeutic Option to Treat COVID-19. 2020 saw a novel coronavirus, namely the SARS-CoV-2 virus, wreaking havoc over the lives of the people. What once started as an isolated epidemic limited to the Wuhan province of China has spread to the whole world and emerged as a full-blown pandemic. Introduction. Since no specific drugs or vaccine is available for the coronavirus, we need to find alternative treatment modalities. One such treatment method is convalescent plasma therapy. In convalescent plasma therapy, we use plasma from donors who have recently recovered from a targeted disease. Screening is done to identify suitable donors with the desired neutralizing antibody concentration, which when given to the patient, results in decreased viral load and increased viral clearance. The history of plasma therapy is old and it was first used during the Spanish influenza pandemic. Here is a table giving more details about the history of plasma therapy. Methodology. We reviewed all relevant publications which mentioned plasma therapy. Out of 61 articles, we found 8 articles which talked about convalescent plasma therapy in the COVID-19 pandemic in detail. Here is a table naming all the eight articles. So, what were the results of our study? We observed in a pilot study done by Dwan et al. that when 10 critically ill COVID-19 patients were given one dose of 200 milliliters of convalescent plasma, there were favorable post-plasma transfusion lab results showing a seven-day disappearance in viremia, along with improved clinical symptoms like fever, cough, chest pain, dyspnea, along with improved oxyhemoglobin saturation. The other studies also showed similar results. Other than that, there were improvement in radiological findings, and the ground glass opacity of lung decreased in lung CD scans, and pulmonary lesions and lung consolidations were resorbed after plasma therapy. Lab parameters also showed improvement with an increase in lymphocyte count and a fall in inflammatory markers like C-reactor protein, AST, and ALT. So what were the disadvantages of plasma therapy? They were lack of large-scale trials, small sample size, failure to standardize antibody given to the patient, adverse transfusion reactions, antibody-dependent enhancement of infection, and failure to rule out concomitantly provided other modes of treatment. Hence, in conclusion, we can say that we need to conduct large-scale clinical trials to establish the safety profile of plasma therapy. We need to develop protocols to avoid adverse transfusion reactions and the transmission of pathogens during plasma therapy. Thank you.